Sound is basically vibrations, and we can represent sound using special diagrams that are kind of shaped like a, a mountain and a valley. And because these diagrams are shaped a little bit like mountains and valleys, we describe them as waves. Waves. I don't get it. We've all got a basic understanding of what sound is because we hear things every day. And we've probably got some idea of how we might describe some of those sounds. For example, we know that there are sounds that are high pitched. And by contrast, there are sounds that are low pitched. But what exactly is sound? And what is it about it that allows for this high and low pitch? Well, to understand sound, a good place to start is how loudspeakers work. Basically, when a loudspeaker is going to generate sound, what it has to do is move up slightly and then back down. And it's going to do this really, really fast in a little pulse. Now, as the loudspeaker does this, the air molecules that are immediately in front of the loudspeaker will be forced outwards. And those air molecules are going to collide with the next set of air molecules that are right in front of them. And then those air molecules are going to collide with the next ones in front of them, eventually transferring this little pulse away from the speaker. Now this alone is not enough to create sound. In order for sound to be generated, this pulse has to happen repeatedly. It has to happen many times each second. The vibration of air molecules allows sound to travel at a speed of 340 meters per second. Now that sounds quite fast, but if we compare it to water, which is much more dense, meaning the molecules are much more close together, it is capable of transferring sound at a faster speed of around about 1500 meters per second. Now let's look at this diagram of air molecules vibrating as a consequence of this pulsing of a speaker. What we've presented here is something called a longitudinal wave, but it's a little bit more convenient to present sound diagrammatically using something called a transverse wave. On this diagram, we can see from the transverse waves that there are three waves within a time frame of one second. This means that the speaker is vibrating at a rate of three pulses per second. And this is telling us the frequency. Frequency has the units hertz. And so we can say that this speaker is generating a sound of three hertz. Now let's have a listen to what three hertz sounds like. Can you hear it? No, and there's a reason for that. Human hearing is only capable of responding to frequencies in the range of 20 hertz up to 20 thousand hertz. Anything lower than 20 hertz is described as subsonic and our ears can't hear it. Anything higher than 20 thousand hertz is described as supersonic and we can't hear it. Let's look at a speaker in action playing a frequency of 30 hertz. Now on this speaker I've put a few little bits of polystyrene which are there to demonstrate the up and downwards movements of the speakers a little bit more closely. As we turn it on we can see the little bits of polystyrene bouncing around all over the place. And if we play this back in slow motion we can see quite clearly the upwards and downwards movement of the speaker. Now if we want to demonstrate this graphically a device which takes a sound and represents it as a wave is known as an oscilloscope. If we look at this frequency being played through the oscilloscope, we can see our transverse wave. Now let's see what happens if we increase the frequency to 50 hertz. We can see that the bits of polystyrene are bouncing around faster and the shape of the wave has changed. Now let's look at it at 100 hertz. Notice that as we increase the frequency, we are increasing the pitch. As you can see, the transverse wave shape is changing. But what exactly do these shape changes mean? Well, the first thing to notice about a transverse wave is how wide it is. And this is referred to as the wavelength. If we have a longer wavelength, this means that we have fewer pulses in any unit of time. 
which means we have a lower frequency and therefore a lower pitch. By contrast, of course, if we've got a shorter wavelength, it means that we've got more pulses in any unit of time, therefore a higher frequency and a higher pitched sound. Another important thing to notice about transverse waves is their height. The height of the wave is telling us the amplitude. And when we're talking about sound waves, a greater amplitude basically means a louder sound. So by contrast, if we've got a less tall wave, then we have a softer sound.